Hey everyone, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to Building Stunning Apps for iOS with ASP.NET presented by DevExpress Technical Evangelist Mahul Harry. In this webinar, Mahul will demonstrate building an iPad application in DXperience 12 point run, released as part of our next generation of tools, DX2. Mahul will demo a financial planner web app that looks and operates like a native iOS solution but relies on the ASP.NET skills that developers have today. See how to build iOS solutions without knowledge of Xcode and learn the new templates and wizards built into 12.1 that simplify creating this type of application. Mahul will answer questions at the end of the session, but you can enter your questions at any time in the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Or for you Twitter folks, you can tweet your questions using the hashtag DXWebinarIOS. Now before we get started, DevExpress would love to know a little bit more about all of you joining us today. So we do have uh, a few poll questions for you. And the first one is, are you currently building applications uh, targeting one or more of the following? iPad, iPhone, Android devices, other mobile devices. And it looks like about 66% iPad. 62% iPhone, 35% Android, and about 25% um, on other mobile devices. Great. And then our next question is, are you currently building applications for Windows 8 RT? And uh, this is an easy one. You can select one of the following, yes or no. So are you currently building applications for Windows 8 RT? Yes or no? And again, I'll give everybody just a second to get your answer in. And it looks like, wow, a resounding 93% no, 7% yes. Awesome. Uh, thank you for voting. And then my last question for you is, are you currently a DevExpress customer? So all of you joining us today, um, are you a DevExpress customer? Yes, no, not yet, but you're planning to download the trial. So yes, no, not yet planning to download the trial. So it looks like about 40% no, 30% yes, and then about 30% not yet, but planning to download. Awesome. Thanks everybody so much for your feedback. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us. And I will now hand things over to Mahul Harry. Thank you very much, Amanda. And thanks everyone for joining today. Today we're going to take a look at Build Stunning Apps for iOS with ASP.NET. So first, I'd like to introduce to you Amanda. Now Amanda is on the left there, and that's Chewbacca on the right, and she'll be our co-host, and uh, she uh, just, uh, she'll help out with the questions on the back end and so forth, and uh, that's me. I was so jealous of her picture with Chewbacca that I superimposed him in there with me. And uh, I thank you for joining today. So let's take a look at the problem that we're addressing. Um, imagine, you're a developer, a web developer, sitting there creating websites for your company or uh, your own personal use, and all of a sudden you get this request. Uh, maybe it's from your boss, maybe it's from your customers that says, hey, listen, you know, I've started using this iPad thing, and it's fantastic, and, and your site works fine on it, but you know, it, it's not quite, uh, it doesn't look like a native app. And I want it to feel like a native app. I want to have that experience, because I use these other apps, and they're fantastic. And so we saw this uh, and uh, from a lot of customers. We, we saw this same question come up again and again. How do we support the iPad? Well, uh, generally you have, to, you have to take a, a, a kind of a leap here because essentially you as a web developer who knows ASP.NET, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript have now have to ask yourself to build an application for any of the mobile platforms requires you to learn a new platform. Essentially, let's say you, you are targeting iPad, then you have to go essentially buy a Mac and uh, build it on there, uh, as well as uh, learn Cocoa, uh, uh, learn a new IDE, and so forth. So, you know, unless you're ready to switch over and jump and look into Xcode, you'll find that this is uh, not easy. So what, uh, what DevExpress did was looked at our customers and said, okay, well, what's, what can we do here? Essentially, a lot of companies, corporations have said that uh, the answer isn't to uh, necessarily uh, completely drop everything you're doing today. 
And, and in fact, uh, a recent uh, study from Gartner said a similar thing is that you know, the mobile shift is, is not just about shiny new apps. You know, it's about replacing old technology with new technology. And uh, when, once you get this once in a generation type change, you know, moving, let's say, from mainframe to client server, from client server to the web, you have to understand how the technology is changing business models and opening up a new class of systems of engagement. And so what they recommended is that what you really have to do, your strategy should really take a people-centric, you should take a people-centric strategy that will help you save money and time. And so, you know, there's a lot of different options for building mobile web apps, uh, clearly. Uh, so what DevExpress did was we said, well, how can we help our customers and uh, developers in general that are using and building great websites now to target these mobile devices, specifically, let's say, iPad and you know Android tablets. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a few minutes about why you want to target tablets right now versus uh, maybe, let's say, the smaller mobile devices. Um, but uh, so what we did was we, we said, well, we want to enable this. Now, uh, DevExpress has a set of libraries uh, for ASP.NET that provides a lot of, uh, provides a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me one second, that provides a lot of reach. Now, In, in the web, you can, let me just bring up the training demos real quick here. Uh, when, you, when you make a website, you are making a choice. Now, back in the, uh, the days before mobile, you were making a choice of building a, a local rich application for, let's say, WinForms or Win32 versus the web. And even then, your choice is essentially involved getting richness of the local WinForms versus the reach, because the web gives you the capability to deploy faster and to be able to uh, support a lot of different browsers and target machines and platforms that weren't possible. So for example, if you wrote a WinForms app, you couldn't reach somebody that's using uh, Linux or Safari, um, uh, Macintosh, but with HTML, you can reach all of those. So the web it gives you that greatest reach. And so DevExpress, we realized that we had this capability of cross-browser compatibility. And we can target all sorts of browsers, including IE6 and Firefox and Chrome and Safari. And so we wanted to leverage this because we know that customers know ASP.NET. Developers, .NET developers know how to create ASP.NET applications. So we said, how can we bring this? How can we bring this rich set of library that allows you to create these stunning type of applications? So for us, the answer was essentially to take a people-centric approach to this problem of creating and supporting mobile tablet devices. And so we said, the answer is to really use ASP.NET and use it with DevExpress. Now, as in development, you always have a choice. So as I mentioned, you can completely create stunning, rich native applications using a, a base platform. However, uh, if you are in a, in a, let's say, corporation where that's not easily possible, let's say you don't have a rock star uh, developer team that has created a bunch of apps that knows all the ins and outs of making apps or what the iOS guidelines are for how big the tab bar should be, then you want to make sure that you leverage what it is that you're good at today. And so we, we're going to present to you today a solution that lets you leverage ASP.NET using DevExpress to get started easily. And so one of the things we've introduced in, in our latest release is a project wizard that helps you get started to create these web apps. Now we're going to take a look at this and you're going to see how easy it is to get started with this. So let's jump over to Visual Studio. Now, if you have the latest Visual Studio and you've got the latest DevExpress installed, you can just click Start a New Project. And from here, uh, either under Visual Basic or C Sharp, you've probably looked under Web, and there's the standard templates from Microsoft. And if you scroll down, you'll find the DevExpress ones. You can also find them if you go scroll down under Templates and you'll see a specific category for DevExpress, and this way it'll filter out just the DevExpress templates. 
And one of the templates is this ASP.NET tablet web application. Now I'm going to click select that and click OK. Now, the first thing you're presented with is this beautiful DevExpress ASP.NET Project Wizard. And it has four tabs on top. The first one allows you to choose the layout. Now, here in this layout, I can choose how uh, my web app should look. Now, because this mimics an, a, a native app, an iOS native app, in terms of look and feel to a lot of degree, uh, you'll see that we have presented to you the, some of the most common layouts. Now, this is done after our development team and design team studied exactly what those elements of an iOS app are from the iOS guidelines itself. So we figured out exactly how big the tab bar should be. What should go in the tab bar? Uh, how should the panel, uh, side panel look in the toolbar? For example, why does the side panel go up all the way versus the toolbar? Well, typically, uh, this, this area is sometimes used as a search. And so what's interesting about this approach is this allows you to not worry about how to get started because this gives you essentially the base guideline for the layout. And from here, I can also select what goes in the side panel. Now, initially, it would give you things like a nav bar, or you can leave it empty if you want to put something else like a tree view in there. Or if you don't want a grid view in the client area, you, you can select that as well. So these options make it super easy. Now, the reason we have some defaults here is because, in general, uh, most, most apps and sites are used for some form of data representation or data manipulation. And so we just wanted to make it very easy to get started with, these pro uh, with our controls as well as to have a site up and running as quick as possible. And so uh, this wizard allows you to do that. Now, you can also select the site configuration because what's great about this is this is still an ASP.NET website. So you still have options to make sure you have, uh, it, this allows you to set up things like the max request length for uh, uploads and so forth, uh, content length, whether you want request validation and so forth. Now, uh, we also have some DevExpress specific control settings. Now, DevExpress has done a lot of work for functionality, for um, performance, for compressing callbacks and resource merging and so forth. Now, if you're at all interested in any of these options, we have a lot of documentation that describes each one. Uh, but in general, by default, we enable certain uh, items that allow the site to work faster. Now, in this case, I'll, I'll turn on HTML compression because I don't have IIS compression uh, installed. In general, if you have IIS compression, you don't want to enable this. And uh, if you need right to left layout or if you have a specific callback URL, you can set all of that here. And finally, we're doing a lot of work for localization. And for our international customers, this is great because we've gone through a lot of uh, hard work. We have a specific team that's building out different languages for all of our controls. So you can easily, from our projects, select one that allows you to say, well, I'm going to use German or Spanish, Japanese or Russian. And like I said, for now, we only have uh, these in available. But as we go along, we're going to keep doing more and more. So I'm okay with those defaults for now, and I'll select Create Project. Now once I do that, this will kick in and go ahead and create a full Visual Studio solution that has, uh, if it's necessary, a master page. But more importantly, it's going to bring in all the CSS and the JavaScript that is necessary to make this look and feel like a native application. Now, Granted, this is still a web application, so we won't have access to all the local resources that an, a regular native application does. Because as you know, uh, a browser application, regardless of what browser it's running, is always sandboxed for security. Now, if you're interested in that, we can talk about that a little bit more. So uh, these t uh, that template you just saw is available for both Visual Basic and C Sharp. Now, uh, as you can see here, uh, I've got a solution. Now let's uh, zoom in here and you'll see the first thing is that under references, DevExpress go ahead, goes ahead, go ahead and add all of the necessary web references for utils and grid views and so forth. And this just makes it easy so that when you actually drag and drop one of these uh, items on your page, it, it go ahead, goes ahead and gives it to you. Now for this, we've also added some dummy data. And it's just an XML file. Now, the reason we do this is because we find it's so much easier to get started when something is already data bound. And what's interesting is that it's, it, you can quickly uh, 
let's take a look at let's take a look at this uh, default page here and you'll see that I have got that nav bar that's on my left side and as well you'll see I have a grid view now this grid view is bound to this XML data source and you say well that's great this is a local XML file now if you wanted you can easily remove this put in a SQL data source because what's great about this approach is this is still ASP.NET so whether you use entity data source or link data source uh, whatever your option is any enumerable data source is supported via our controls now let's take a look at this in action before we go further All right, so while that loads up, what's happening here is uh, uh, Visual Studio is just uh, compiling and creating it. Now, uh, because uh, I, don't, I don't actually have a good emulator on here, so let me actually help you guys imagine what this might look like on a tablet. Let's go full screen. And so here you can imagine that this is your tablet application. So imagine if this were running on Safari. You can see that because DevExpress controls support touch, all of these items are touch enabled, as well as I've got the capability to do uh, scrolling. Now, because this is still Safari, you, you'll see that uh, you know, uh, this won't behave exactly like it would on a Safari, uh, iPad Safari. And what's great about this though is I have a full working website that supports touch and all the controls and it has a native look to it and as you can see this is our grid view so it still supports things like sorting uh, column reorganization in fact I can do multiple sorting so I can select uh, beds going uh, descending and uh, bats going ascending and so forth and What's interesting is all of this is built right in. So as you can see, I even have navigation inside here using our page control. And this looks and feels and behaves very much like an iOS native site. And so for example, all those elements that we saw before for the toolbar and for the nav area and so forth in the client area, all of this is generating ASP.NET, but it gives you a beautiful looking iOS iPad application that is touch enabled with all the controls. Now, you saw that we created this in just probably, let's say, five minutes using DevExpress Project ASP.NET Wizard. And what's interesting, as I mentioned, is that you can uh, go through you can go through this uh, uh, a sample in just a few minutes. Now, what's great about this is regardless if I was to run this in landscape or portrait, we've added all the necessary styles for you to uh, run this and we've added the necessary scripts to support uh, touch resizing and, and uh, all of the interesting items that you would need because by default you don't have to uh, need to worry about well you know is this going to look right is this going to react right what's the uh, uh, scroll feedback look like uh, as I'll show you in a minute all of this is available uh, just by default by using this project template wizard and what we've done here is we've simply given you a, a master page that has essentially the overall layout and then you can derive from that master page and then start adding your own uh, custom items for example into the, in the this will be the client area and then in the side panel nav bar will be the ASPX uh, other area but if I wanted to I can completely remove this and add let's say a tree view or something like that now uh, that's very interesting. So let's take a look now of what else is possible. So as we saw, that project template wizard allows you to do a lot of interesting things. This is another wizard, I'm sorry, this is another demo that we created based exactly on that project wizard you just saw earlier. In fact, if you wanted to create this, if you want to take this look right here of a sample home realtor uh, type of iPad application, you can we've made it just as easy so for example if you go to file new project to that wizard again and select tablet and you know for the heck of it this time let me select the visual basic version I'm gonna select OK now in this project wizard one of the things I didn't talk about before was I had this option to also select realtor store 
Now this realtor store is uh, uh, fully available here. Now the same options are available. So when I click create project, what happens is it's basically using this exact layout, but what we did was we wanted to get this demo available to you so you can see, well, you know what? That layout is great, but what's fully possible if I was to make a full application out of this? And so you'll see in a minute is this application is uh, gives you a stunning look. Man, all of this is available with all the DevExpress controls. For example, uh, it's available with uh, any of our projects like our uh, schedulers, our charts, and so forth. Now, most of the most of the controls that I'll show you in a minute. Now, I, I imagine a lot of you are not familiar with DevExpress, so I'll, I'll quickly mention that you know we do we we make essentially a lot of solutions for .NET. Now, we've been around a long time. But what's great is that we we are at the user interface level that allow you to create stunning looking applications that essentially give you the functionality for making beautiful charts and dashboards and reporting as well as data manipulation with editing features all built in. So what you're worried about is essentially uh, what is what is it that you have to address in terms of business logic. All right, so let's take a look at this default application in action. I'm sorry, this uh, home realtor application in action. All right, so while that's loading, let me just close up a couple of things here. All right, so here, uh, here you can see that this essentially is the same exact layout. But in here, what we've done is we've used uh, uh, another control from DevExpress to show you that you can have a list here, as well as we've added search up here, as well as just a few things like buttons and so forth, and the navigation can be different. Now, what's interesting is if you upload this website to your IIS server and then browse to it from your iPad, you can essentially uh, see that this looks and behaves like a native app. And what's great is that if you were to resize this into a portrait or a landscape, it will actually give you different view types. So let's take a look at this. And you can see here that what we've done is we've even given you some guidance for how, how this might be possible by giving you specific controls that react to different landscape views and portrait views so you can see how to address this yourself as well as perhaps have, let's say, a detail view. So if you were to click on one of the pictures, how do you navigate to that? And like I said, all of this is built right in so that you can see we've added all the items for the specific uh, addressing of Apple, uh, I, Apple browsers on the native devices. All right. Now, we wanted to take this even further to show you what is completely possible because it is not just about solving that problem. So as you remember earlier, the challenge is how do we support mobile? But that doesn't mean as web developers you still don't have to support native uh, uh, default uh, browser uh, applications for things like IE, Safari, and so forth. And while you can still build those, what we wanted to show you is, hey, why not create one website, one, one, one Visual Studio solution that supports both uh, the desktop web as well as a mobile application. And so what we did, we had some fun and we created this Money Monkey application. Now, basically, let me tell you the story behind this. About uh, a few weeks before the release, uh, our marketing team came to us and said, hey, we really would want to make a stunning application. We think what you've created with touch support and these uh, project wizards that give you this native look and feel using HP.NET is amazing. So let's really showcase this. And I said, okay, well, how do we do that? Well, they said, you know, I don't know if you've used any financial application like Mint.com or Quicken, but you know, those are really interesting because they, they allow you to showcase a lot of, a lot of amazing things. And we said, yeah, okay, that's great. So 
what happened was, you know, our designer came to us and said, well, listen, I'll mock up something where, you know, we'll, we'll give you sort of a look based on some of those types of sites, and you guys go and create it. Well, we had a very short time frame, so well, well, how are we going to do this? And essentially, within about a week and a week and a half, uh, myself and a couple of developers essentially got together and said, okay, we know what we want it to look like. Can, is this possible? And I, I am happy to tell you, within just a very short amount of time, we were able to create this Money Monkey site, which if you're, if you're on an iPad right now, I, you can take a look at it. Just go to devexpress.com and then click on, under Try, click on Product Demos. Now here, we'll show you all of the uh, amazing demos we have. For example, we have this Outlook style demo and we have Touchboard, we'll talk, which I'll talk about in a minute. But Money Monkey is that financial one that I just mentioned. Now, if you run the web demo, they'll give you this look at look app, uh, to the application, which is great for desktop web. And what you see here is that I've got this navigation that allows me to collapse. And if I click on one of the uh, accounts, it'll take me to do a direct tran transactions for that account. And as you can see, this is akin to very much an application. Now, if I click on one of these items, it takes me to edit mode. I can update it or cancel it. I can create a new transaction. And as I mentioned, that all this is really interesting because it allows you to have a stunning web application, which you guys are used to today. And, but it's also got some other views that I want to mention. For example, it's got this amazing budget screen. It's got an upcoming um, bills and expenses screen. So I, I highly recommend you play around with it. Now, you can view this on an iPad today. But wouldn't it be great to give you a native look and feel to this? And that's what we did in the same application. So what happens is if you navigate to this uh, website from an iPad, it's automatically going to take you to this version. Now this version, what it does, essentially showcases for you what's possible. Now as you saw, it is essentially, it is not essentially, it is exactly the same website, meaning that it's binding to the same data. And because this is the first of the month, we don't actually, we haven't reached any of our budget overall uh, goals yet. But as it goes on, you'll see that this item goes up. So this is essentially a live uh, site that uh, changes with the days. But what's interesting is as I click this, uh, now let me just for the purpose of showing you what, what this may look like on an iPad, let's say I was to click this. And what it does is you'll see that it's still are using our navigation control, so it responds to touch. Now if I was to go uh, to this uh, specific item, you'll see, let me showcase this. We still have navigation here as well. Now, uh, I'm limited to my screen size here, so it may be a little hard to see. I apologize for that. But the best way to experience this is to go to it from an iPad screen. And you'll see that all of the buttons, all of the scrolling will work. And because if, and, and if you run this locally on an iPad, what's great is that we make use of the default uh, native resources when possible. So for example, we will switch this to native scrolling so that this bar will disappear. So all of these little items are built right in to the portal. Now, and I'm happy to tell you, if you want to take a look at exactly how we did this, you can do that because we packaged that demo in. So one of the things you can do is uh, go to the DevExpress folder. Now, for DevExpress, what we do is we put all of our demos, all of the demos that you see online uh, here are fully available for you to download and play with. So if you install the DevExpress trial or the full DevExpress, if you go to look on your C file, if you go to users, public, public documents, you'll find the DevExpress and it'll say something like DXperience 12.1 demos. And under if you go in there under ASP.NET, and then they're common and choose the C Sharp or Visual Basic, you find all of these rich demos that are full working applications. So here, what I'll do is I'll go into Money Monkey. And under Money Monkey, I can open up this solution. Now in this solution, what we wanted to show you, as I said, was one Visual Studio solution that shows both iOS native style as well as the um, a web application. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we did was we, seg we segmented 
the different views. So for example, under pages, you find the default overview screen, the desktop budget and transaction screen, and you'll see this is still DevExpress controls. For example, all we're doing here is using nav, nav bar, uh, or the buttons or the grid and so forth. And then if you'd like, you can take a look under mobile. So under mobile, what happens is when you first go to this page from the master page, it is smart enough to know that, listen, if I am here from the default page, then I want you to redirect me. Now, if you take a look under default ASPX, all we've done in the page in it is says, look, identify if the browser is of, it supports touch. And if it does, de redirect them to the default ASPX uh, the, under mobile. And that's all it does, right? But what's interesting is now you can see that we've got the layout. It, it's smart enough to use the iOS theme as well as any specific themes that you, uh, any specific colors and uh, images that you want to add to this view. So let's take a look at this in action. Now, I am happy to tell you that you know it, when you first get started and you and you ask yourself, well, how am I going to do this? How am I going to support these items? Right? Uh, it, it's. Uh, I hope you walk away from this today feeling like, hey, it's possible. If you know, and I am not a uh, let's say essentially. Uh, you know, I don't write a lot of mobile apps and so forth. But what's I do write a lot of web apps, and so what was interesting is that with the support from ASP.NET, I. You know, me, myself and a couple of developers were able to create this uh, demos, and all that it's using is things like DevExpress charts here, the grid, the navigational controls. So it's completely possible for any uh, any of you to get started with this today. Now, as I, as you meant, as I mentioned that under the mobile folder, it gives us the mobile view. So all I did was I navigated to mobile on my desktop web. But if I did this from an iPad, it, it is automatically going to detect that and redirect us. So that's Money Monkey. Now, we wanted to make this even more interesting. So what we said, well, let's go a little bit further. And we made another application called Touchboard. Now, this is just a splash screen for Touchboard. And what's interesting about Touchboard is that it's, uh, it's an application that uses, essentially, it's HTML5. But what we wanted to do was wanted to show you what it's like to use uh, local caching, HTML5 local cache. So let's open up that project. As I mentioned, we 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 package all of these in here. So for example, Touchboard here is here as well, and we can open this from uh, Visual Studio directly. So I'll go to Documents, DevExpress, ASP.NET, Common. C sharp and touchboard. Open up touchboard. So touchboard essentially has one page to it, and I'll, and you'll see why in a minute. In fact, let's let's take a look at it. All right. Now, if we go to demos and click on touchboard, what it'll do essentially it will load up uh, this view. Now I like to use the this version so that it gives us some Chrome, and you'll see that you know I can switch from landscape or portrait, and this application automatically adjusts. And, what it is is if you if you use the, uh, an application called Flipboard on iPad, that's what this style is, and I highly highly recommend you try this on your iPad because what's great is what you're going to feel, and you really have to feel this application because the touch is so responsive. So as I drag this around, I'm able to create these panels that give me in, bits of information of news, uh, essentially very much like tiles. And what what is most amazing about this after you experience this on an iPad is uh, that you may not be able to tell is that this is an app, an uh, HP.NET application. It doesn't feel like it at all, but it is. And what it what it we wanted to do was to show you that this is possible. So when this application first loads, what we're doing is, for example, this is still our grid and charts, but we've used some smarts from HTML5 that allows you to do offering caching. So let's take a look at that in action. Now. Uh, what's, it, what's great about uh, HTML5 is it gives you a very easy way to do it. Uh, and what we show, we show you that essentially that you can do this in this application 
by uh, creating what's called this cache app cache file that just tells the solution and the website what it needs to cache when it's first loaded. So for example, we said, hey, go ahead and cache these items here. So for example, it won't need to go and uh, load those uh, items every time. Now, this is still an ASP.NET application, but it's just using our iOS theme. So for you, what's interesting is that you can essentially create this exact same look and feel. And you still have the option to data bind it. Now we just binded it to some XML files, but these are easily replaceable. So if you'd like, you can bind this to a SQL data source if you'd like. So check out Touchboard on the web. I believe that's probably the best way to experience it. Now finally, I get this question a lot. So let me see if I can uh, help answer it. Now you say, this is great. This is what, essentially, this is an, a, a screenshot from my uh, Safari browser and on my iPad. And you say, well, yeah, but you know, you still have this URL and so forth. How do you how do you get rid of this Chrome? Well, if you click on this uh, button here, it allows you to create. What's there's an option that says Add to Home Screen. If you select Add to Home Screen, what it will do is it will actually create an icon locally. Now, unfortunately, I don't believe there's any automatic way to do this uh, on iPads. But once you do create this, what will happen is it'll create an icon that, that once you launch this application from that icon it will remove all of the Chrome and tabs and so forth. So, it, as I said, you can create these applications. You, you can, in fact, try our applications from the web, add them to your local home screen as an icon to experience them and see what it will look like as an application. So it is a web app that behaves very much like a native app. All right, so let's do a recap. Uh, we take a look at the web apps and using DevExpress 12.1. We saw, let's go back here. We saw Money Monkey and Touchboard. Now, those are just a few of the many applications that are available today. Uh, we have several, several demos, as you saw from this folder. Uh, in fact, we have this giant clinical study application. We have this home realtor and a lot of, lot of sites that I highly recommend you explore. The trial is completely free and it's fully functional. So for 30 days you get to experience what it's like to build this. So in, in fact, you can build an application today. Now, it's your turn. Download that trial as I just mentioned that's free from our website by going to devexpress.com. And I thank you very much. I want to leave a lot of uh, uh, room open today for questions. And uh, if you have any questions for me, please go to devexpress.com slash mehool uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Mihul Harry. You can email me if you'd like, mihul at devexpress.com. I'm very accessible, and I'd love to hear how you are targeting. Because I saw from the polls today that a lot of you are looking to target, essentially, iOS platform. And you have a lot of options today for how you solve this problem. Well, DevExpress feels that you can you leverage what you have, take a people-centric approach for investing in what you know and what you have available to you today with ASP.NET and powerful controls from DevExpress and create these native applications. So uh, with that, I'll hand it back to you, Amanda, and let's take some questions. Awesome. Thank you, Mahul. All right, so we did have a ton of questions coming in uh, throughout that session. The first one is from Buck. Are the templates also available in VB or just C Sharp? Yeah, absolutely. They're available in Visual Basic and C Sharp. Uh, the great thing about .NET is that you can essentially use any language. Uh, right now, we only support those two, uh, but as I said, you can you can choose your own and make. Uh, with those file templates, we wanted you to see how it's possible to get started. But if there's a specific language like F Sharp or anything that you prefer, you can create a default project in that language and then simply take a look at what we've done or pull, pull the necessary HTML code in for the browser detection and so forth. And all the DevExpress controls work with any of the .NET languages. Great. From Mark, is your chart control supported in this tablet ASP.NET project? Yes, it is, Mark. Excuse me. Uh, all of the DevExpress controls from, uh, let me just quickly sh uh, highlight a couple of those things. I kind of browsed past them. If you go to this uh, demos.devexpress.com, 
it will bring you to this URL. And if you scroll down, obviously you can see all these amazing applications. But you can also see what we have is what we call training demos. The training demos are a way to experience what's possible. So we have a lot of things for MVC, SharePoint, ASP.NET, and all of our controls essentially work on all any of the ASP.NET platforms. And for ASP.NET, we have over 90 controls. Everything from reporting to charting and so forth. And even uh, we have a, a range of controls for creating, let's say, uh, dashboard style applications or just data manipulation sites and so forth. And for specifically charts, to answer your question, we have a ton of charts, everything from two-dimensional to three-dimensional to radar view. So, uh, and we're always updating these too, introducing new types of charts and uh, new types of features for those charts as well. So I hope that answers the question. So there was a lot of questions about Android. Uh, does the iOS template work on Android? What do I need to do if I want the same website app look and feel on Android, etc.? Great question. Um, the, the, the short answer is we, sh we support all the DevExpress ASP.NET controls support touch by default. So why, why is that so important? Well, touch is really what these devices are all about. It's called natural user interface. And in a natural user interface, it means that, you know, natural meaning that it's touch-based. So if you were to, let's say, touch a book, in the same sense, any interface that is now moving away from the paradigm of uh, keyboard and mouse into this new paradigm of, you know, finger and touch, which is why you saw me use that other cursor, just so that you can imagine that this is how your end users are going to use it. Uh, so it's important to kind of imagine, well, what do they want to do? How, how big do the targets need to be? And it's a very important question because it's one of these that you have to ask yourself that we have to rethink how we offer these to our end users so that, uh, so for example, let's say this is a very typical desktop application. It's very powerful. But as you can see, this may not work best on an iPad device because this is really designed for a keyboard and mouse. It's not necessarily designed for a finger because the touch target for a finger needs to be bigger. You need to have bigger uh, 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 targets for example, the buttons have to be bigger. Maybe they have to be rounded and so forth. And that's what we did with our iOS theme. So our iOS theme essentially uh, allows you to say, hey, listen, we understand that touch is not about keyboard and mouse. It's more about the finger and how the user responds to these items and what that needs to feel like. And so uh, that touch support is supported from all iOS devices and all Android devices as well. We support Android 3.0 and above. And with Android releasing the latest ice cream sandwich, which is more phenomenal than anything, because with each, with each release, they seem to get, be getting better and better. Uh, but you know their direct response to touch and so forth has gotten so good. And all the DevExpress controls will work on both, including, because this is a website, this is going to work on Android as well. You're welcome to try it on Android. What you'll find, though, this honestly, though, I will tell you, this is optimized for iPads. So what you may want to do is you, and, and you may not want to use what looks standard for iPads. Now, the reason we, st we chose iPad is because it just tends to, it, right now, it tends to be more popular on the tablet side for this. And as I mentioned earlier, that the reason uh, we also are targeting iPads is because these controls that we have, they're, they're big controls. For example, uh, big in the sense that they really give you a lot of functionality and features. And you know you can use our grids. You can even let's say, for example, use our scheduler with the iOS thing. But if you do, you know it, it won't look great on a on a phone device because the phone it's very limited. It's limited to you know four inches, five inches, six inches, and a tablet can be anywhere from like eight inches to ten inches or even maybe seven inches. So you really want to be reticent of how much real estate you have, and. Uh, you know, choose accordingly. So you can use any of the DevExpress controls. They work fantastic on them. And you know, we just uh, we wanted to help you get started easier. And you know, you can choose any any one that you like. Just be sure that you that you make it about the content. So in this case, for example, when we went from the web demo view, uh, and we said, okay, how are we going to make this look on an iPad? We said, well, you know, we get rid of this first of all, right? I mean. We don't need to worry about taking up as much room for uh, logging and logging out because that would be different. Uh, this won't exist on there because that you know will go to the bottom of the screen, right? So, for example, navigation now typically is at the bottom. 
uh, also we, we had to make sure that the content was really more about showing uh, whether you're on target, you know, what, which items can I see right away. So it's one of these uh, things that you want to think about and I believe, uh, I hope these demos will help you see uh, how to target these devices in, in a faster way. And like I said, the reason we exposed all of these, all of the source code, all of the images, all of the styles, is we want you to use them. We want you to build solutions based off of these. Uh, you know, you're fully welcome to use any of our demos for your own uh, needs for your applications. Great. Um, Mahul, are any of the solutions MVC based? Do you support MVC? We absolutely support MVC and we, we have over 45 MVC extensions. So if you go to, uh, actually if you go to devexpress.com slash ASP, this is the default landing page that shows you everything about our ASP.NET controls. Now, I am, I'm really happy you asked about MVC because I, I really like MVC as well. Um, what you'll find is that for MVC, we have 45 extensions and like 94 web forms. The reason is web forms has been around longer. And we can't port everything to MVC because it just wouldn't make sense to. Uh, there are some controls that just don't work well in MVC because MVC has some limitations. For example, this support view state uh, or callbacks. But what's interesting is we found ways to leverage our MVC extensions. And I believe if you take a look at if you go to devexpress.com slash MVC, you'll see that we have probably the best set of MVC extensions out there. Uh, the reason is we took a certain approach to MVC. Uh, we said we were going to provide functionality. MVC, when it first came out, had some confusing terms about it. And, uh, for example, you know, people felt that it was just about the framework. And at the end of the day, what you need to do is not deliver a framework. You need to develop Develop, uh, deliver functionality. You want to deliver to your end users because your end users don't care what your HTML looks like or CSS looks like. They care that they can get their job done, that they have the right data for them. And so MVC as a web developer is great for us because it gives this uh, paradigm for model view controller to separate out uh, the logic from the presentation. And what we did, we said, well, hey, Okay, well, how do we fit in that? Well, we made native MEC extensions that provide rich functionality like, uh, you know, grouping and sorting and powerful filtering. And just recently, we've even ported things like our scheduler. So we have a reporting suite. We have charting suite. Uh, let's see, can I bring this up? So if you go to mvc.devexpress.com, this will take you to the demos. And let me look at devexpress.com slash mvc. This will bring up the landing page. So if you go to this page, you'll see all the amazing controls we have. For example, we have a pivot control that I don't, I don't think anybody else has for MVC. And this is a powerful data analyzation tool that lets your end users answer some powerful questions like, you know, you, all you do is you give them, a, you bind it to your data. Now whether that data is an OLAP data in a cube from analysis services or it's as your SQL data source, it doesn't matter. What this thing does is, it says, okay, I'm going to create summarizations on the fly so they can answer questions like, hey, who are my top 10 customers? What are my top two products? And you're not doing this. You're giving the end user the power to do this. And we have things like charts integration for MVC. So what's amazing is, you know, as I said, is you, you can make these applications for desktop or for web. They support touch. You can use our iOS theme so you can run them on iPads or Android devices. So I hope that answers the question. If not, you know, uh, please feel free to call me, ping me, and I'd be happy to help you uh, figure out, uh, you know, what, what DevExpress can do for you guys. Uh, awesome. So uh, from Nikolai, so basically you just provide a set of controls for web and mobile and a simple logic to switch from one to another? Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, uh, it, look, honestly, this we have not invented this capability. This capability to detect browsers, DevExpress it has always delivered quality. And, and the way we did that is we don't try to reinvent something that works really well. And so, for example, this uh, technology to detect browsers and to switch over, that's not really necessarily new. What's new is we've sub we now have supported uh, touch from all of our devices. I'm sorry, from all of our controls for Android and, and iOS. 
we've also enabled a new theme, this iOS theme that I keep talking about. And what that does is it gives you that capability. So let, let's just take a look. So for example, let's go File New, and I'm going to create a new standard HP.NET web application. This is the default uh, one. Now this will bring up the default wizard. Now, you know, here you can see that I can make a standard application or I can make an empty one or I can make that Outlook style that I just mentioned earlier. In fact, you know, let, let's do this. Let's make a, let's make a custom one and instead of a nav bar, I'm going to put a tree view. Actually, you know what, let's put a few, let's put a menu. Uh, and in the header, well, actually I've got a header in the menu, so let's put a tree view actually. In the right area, it's kind of empty, so I don't, actually I don't want a right area at all. Um, do I? Uh, you know what, let's do that. Let's put a cloud control in the right area. And then in the center, we'll put a scheduler. And now, I want to do something crazy here. I'm going to choose a different theme. I'm going to choose the iOS theme here. So what you'll see right away is that I went from something on the default application, you'll see that this fits in all nicely. When I go to iOS, things are different. So you, you want to be a little careful here and because as I mentioned, you can completely choose this. But as I also mentioned that because you've got limited real estate, you also want to think about what is the core content of what I need to deliver. And if your core content, it may not make sense to use a certain theme with it. But what's great is we provide that uh, functionality. So uh, the short answer is yes. But to create this iOS theme, to create the touch support, and to put it all together into a solution that lets you go file new and get started right away, I believe that's really the innovation. That's really uh, the fact that you can leverage HP.NET within a few minutes, upload it to your server on Azure or uh, Google Cloud or you know, Amazon Cloud or hey, uh, even your you know, uh, uh, HP.NET hosting service, whatever it is and then browse to it from your iPad, that's really the innovation to get started right away with this. That's really the most powerful way I feel. And so, um, you know, I, I recommend that you try it today. You know, if you have the capability, if you have the servers, download it, play with it, upload it, and see how it feels for you. Great. All right, everybody. We only have time for a couple more questions. Uh, Mahul, how about the virtual keyboard when, touch, when you touch on the data, ent a data entry field? Do we support this? Yeah, so the short answer is yeah. Uh, essentially, um, what he's asking for is uh, when you go to the iPad, let's say this one, and uh, when, I, when I click on, let's say, uh, to change in, here it is, let's just show you. Now, obviously, I'm not on that device, but let's say what happens is if I were to click on this, the keyboard would pop up, pop up here at the bottom. And the way that's done is you can essentially render our controls as native controls. Now, the advantage there is that you can get that keyboard because the iPad Safari browser will recognize that it's just a standard element. Now, if you were to use this as a Dev Express control, though, you get nice functionality. You get this styling. You get a client side API. You get the, you get a lot of functionality on top that you wouldn't if you were just using a standard approach. So. The short answer is it's just what your needs are. If your needs are that you want to be able to have that, then yeah, just render our control as a native uh, control. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, keep using the DevExpress uh, features uh, for that rich uh, functionality if you need that. Great. And from David, uh, do you have to have Visual Studio 2012? to make this work, and uh, another question similar to that is, does DevExpress work with VS 2008 as well as 2010? So 2008, 2010, and 2012. Absolutely. So we support uh, Visual Studio 2008, 2010, and I just wanted to show Visual Studio 2012 because there is a lot of interest in this new uh, release as well. But yeah, typically I, I, I typically use Visual Studio 2010 because this is still an RC. Uh, once it's released, you know, uh, once all the bugs are fixed out and so forth, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now, though, it's it's a beta, but it's very interesting. I, I'm quite uh, intrigued by some of the improvements they've uh, added to Visual Studio. So, absolutely, we support 2008, 2000, Visual Studio 2010, and uh, the latest uh, RC Visual Studio. This is an interesting one. Are you going to have a wizard at some point that would help you target web apps for smartphones? 
then you could possibly have one solution for a PC browser, tablet browser, and a smartphone browser. Uh, if he means native apps, uh, essentially, you know, there, there is unfortunately, unfortunately, there isn't a, a let's say easy way to write native apps. And I think somebody even asked about like I think PhoneGap earlier. Um, essentially. I think everybody here has uh, at some point explored uh, this, right? I mean, we're all web developers here, so we have all know what's available to us as options, right? So yeah, let me just, just write out. So when you want to write native, what are your options? Essentially, uh, you can write in the native language or native platform, right? Uh, that basically means um, you have to write uh, either, let's say, iOS, uh, or if you're writing for, you know, um, Google, uh, Android, maybe in Java and so forth, um, you know, and there are some other options out there. For example, like PhoneGap and so forth, and uh, there are some other vendors out there that provide this. And what these do is they essentially compile uh, to the native platform, right? So uh, the question is, what about DevExpress? Does DevExpress have some way to maybe take .NET or some way? Uh, unfortunately, uh, there, you know, I, I don't think there's anything built into .NET for this. Uh, Microsoft, you know, very much, the, .NET is a Microsoft technology, right? So Microsoft is essentially very much focused on their platforms, right? So for example, they have Surface coming out, and they're not interested in, you know, how do you get .NET working natively for iOS or Android, right? Microsoft is obviously going to be interested in uh, this approach. Now, Unfortunately for us as web developers, we don't, we can't easily target. You know, uh, you know, there's let's say Surface coming out from Microsoft, then there's Android tablets, and then there's you know iPads and so forth. So uh, you know, and, and there's even let's say I think Amazon has a, a version as well. So we have to provide all of these. And so what I mention is that if you're going to do this, if you're going to try to target this, unfortunately. There isn't one solution that will natively compile to this and natively uh, support all those, right? And if it does, you're still going to be tweaking them. So, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm not trying to sell you guys on, uh, on this uh, notion that uh, our way is the best way or anything like that. But if you take the ASP.NET approach, ASP.NET has and is going to give you reach, meaning that you're going to be able to touch all of these through the browser. And you can try to make them look native on there. But what's more interesting is because it's ASP.NET, it's easy to deploy, it's easy to update. Um, and you know, I'm not saying that you can't do this. If you want to target iPad natively or if you want to target Android natively, go for it. You know, for example, for Surface, you know, you can be writing, let's say, WinRT, which is a great language, you know, and Java is also great. Uh, you know, as uh, Amanda mentioned, you know, you can do Xcode or something like that for uh, iPad. So you have options. The question is, what are you willing to invest your time in, right? Your time is money. Uh, you, know, you have short cycles for delivering uh, your solutions. So as I mentioned, we have a lot of choices available to us today. Um, if you want to leverage you know, your existing uh, staff, uh, if you don't want to retrain people, uh, we believe ASP.NET is a good, good, good approach for this. Uh, you, know, you also have to invest in some uh, technology, meaning let's say, machines so you know just just consider what the costs are and if you as a organization are willing to invest in that and you have the time and effort um, hey you know it, it, it's just a question of you know where is your priorities what are the resources available to you great thanks Mahul. Um and unfortunately that is all the time that we have. Um, we are at the end of our hour. Uh, but thank you all so much for all of your questions. Um, we do save our questions log, and, and Mahul uh, can go through those. And um, Yeah, I, I will definitely us. go through, and I'll, and I'll see if I can answer them all. You guys can also email me directly. I, I would love to hear from you. you know, I, I'm so honored that so many of you are able to join today. Uh, take the time. So please, you know, I know this, uh, this landscape for mobile is challenging. It's quite a challenge for all of us. Clearly, it's the future. From all the reports from Business Insider and so forth, tell us mobile is outselling uh, desktop. That doesn't mean desktop is going away. It just means 
we have a new landscape now. We have a new paradigm that we have to support as developers. And uh, you know, I feel that DevExpress has a solution to help you. And I, I'd love to hear from you that hey, if you are using, if you are considering it, you know, what kind of industry are you in? What, what kind of site are you looking to build? If you built something and you want to share it with me, you want to show me, you know, c contact me through this email. Contact me through uh, the website, uh, through Twitter. I'm happy to hear from you. And I will definitely see if I can write a blog post. If you go to devexpress.com slash me I'll write a blog, follow a blog post that addresses many of these questions. Great. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Mahul. All right, everybody. So uh, you can visit devexpress.com slash webinars for our upcoming webinar sessions. Register today for Developer Tools Build versus Buy. It's presented by Forrester Principal Analyst Jeffrey Hammett. It's coming up on September 25th. Is it more cost effective to build tools and components on your own or to purchase them? DevExpress commissioned a study by Forrester Research to investigate this question and to track the return on investment an average company realized when implementing tools. In this webinar, Jeffrey Hammond will walk you through an ROI calculation model and help you consider how you might evaluate your future tools investments. So again, if you'd like to trial our products for 30 days for free, you can visit devexpress.com slash trial and download our universal trial today. Again, thanks to Mahul for presenting. Thank you so much to Code Project for hosting us. And of course, thank you all for joining us. Let's see what develops. Bye-bye.